Hey guys, this is going to be a little bit different than my usual video just because I'm doing more of a voiceover while I'm doing the separate work on a different recording. So let me know if you guys like this style of video and I'll continue it in the future. So the tools we're going to be using is going to be the Geisley reaction rod just to make it easier while working on the upper and then a screwdriver to help take off the pistol grip. A punch set, we're going to be using that for both parts and then a hammer. First thing to do whenever you're working on a rifle is obviously just to make sure it's clear. Um, it'll help you know protect your safety and the safety of others, and it'll work every time. So go ahead and take apart the upper and the lower. So one thing I will say that I did not do is taking off the plug for the law folder, which would make it easier, um, but we'll talk about that later. So pull apart the charging handle and the bolt carrier group. My rifle is absolutely disgusting, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a rag. and set that aside. Now you have the upper and the lower apart. We're gonna go ahead and put the reaction rod on the vise. So putting the reaction rod on the vise just makes it to where you have a solid you know, platform to work on the upper and it has a flat on either side to where you can clamp it down pretty good and it won't move. So the reaction rod actually has some, uh, some basically it's like uh, bolt lugs that you can put the barrel into to where it won't rotate and you can put all the torque and the stress on the actual barrel. Then you're just gonna take a punch and then drive out the old pin that's retaining the forward assist. Uh, this is the old, um, this is the Knight's Armament uh, factory forward assist that was actually Cerakoted by Presample Depot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the LSFA from Hodge and Forward Controls. It actually comes with all the hardware needed to install, uh, the spring and the pin. So Hodge typically runs a, um, a teardrop style forward assist, and I guess they decided to collab with uh, Ford Controls, make sort of like a low profile, uh, almost like a teardrop forward assist, but I actually kind of like the aesthetic of it. So that's where we're putting in this. So when you're putting this in, um, one of the pro tips I would advise is to go ahead and start the roll pin um, to where it's in the receiver, but it's not all the way in the channel. And then once the forward assist is in place, just going ahead and tapping it in to where the forward assist is actually being held in place. So I'm going ahead and starting the pin um, with the hammer, and then I'll just finish it with the roll pin punch to where it's nice and flush against the receiver. So one thing I will say is not to hit it too hard. You don't want to drive it completely through the receiver. Just get it uh, flushed up to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a rag and wipe away all the grease. So this upgrade is more aesthetic, uh, but I actually do think it has some functionality as being a low drag forward assist. Uh, but now we're going to go on to the safety selector. So we won't be needing the reaction rod anymore. Instead, we'll be using another tool from Geisley called the reaction block. So the reaction block actually works in a similar way to the reaction rod by taking the stress off of parts that really aren't meant to be stressed. Um, so the receiver, uh, the low receiver, and this really comes in handy when you're working on expensive receivers or uh, maybe fr fragile receivers uh, because all the stress is going to be placed on the buffer tube instead of the receiver. So these nylon screws on the top of the reaction block actually are meant to torque down on the buffer tube, uh, but I won't really be needing them because we won't be doing you know, a lot of extensive work on the buffer tube. Now that that's in place, we're going to be removing the pistol grip. So this is the Knight's Armament factory tote grip, and this is actually held by a flathead screw. So I'm gonna remove that. If you aren't familiar with uh, the anatomy of an AR-15, the pistol grip actually holds in two small pieces, which is the safety detent spring and the safety detent. So if you're not careful, you might lose those parts, so make sure you catch those, and like I did. So in this hole is the safety detent, so we'll be removing that because the Badger safety actually can, comes with a 
safety detent. So we'll set that one aside. I'm gonna go ahead and roll it to the side in the reaction block to where we can take out the safety. So the nice arm of safety is actually held in by a Torx bit, which we'll go ahead and remove and place to the side. This is also among the small parts that was Cerakoted by Presample Depot in the uh, tote paint job they gave me. So a lot of people like to take out the hammer and the uh, trigger in the fire control group, uh, but I don't really feel a need to. Uh, you can kind of finagle your way around it and you can remove the safety selector without taking the trigger out. So um, it's really not a hassle to take the trigger out, but it's just one of the things that I just don't like doing. So now that I have that out, I'm gonna just go ahead and set that aside because I will be keeping this for future builds down the road. You never know when you might need another safety. So you can see the Badger safety kit comes with a lot of parts, so we'll go ahead and get into that. So the barrel on the safety selector actually is kind of special. You can see that it has uh, places for the safety detent on either side. So you can see on my right side, these holes are quite a bit closer than the ones on the left. That's because on the right side is a 60 degree and the left side is a 90 degree selector. I'm gonna go ahead and use the 60 degree just because I'm wanting to try it out. Um, but it's nice that it has the option to go back to a 90 degree. So once again, there's no really need, there's no real need to take out the uh, fire control group in order to put the safety in. But right here, I am going ahead and testing the position of the safety just to make sure, um, because you can kind of get it flipped if you're not paying attention. So once I've tested the position that they are supposed to be in, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it and we're going to go ahead and install the pistol grip again and the safety detent spring. So the Badger kit actually comes with their own safety detent. I'm not sure if it's any different, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So when you're installing the safety detent, um, it's important to just put the spring inside of the pistol grip and sort of push it down. And that's why the reaction block is so handy, just because you know you can kind of support the receiver in a certain position. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down all the way. And then once that is fully in position and the safety detent is in place, we're gonna go ahead and install this. So since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna go ahead and put the, um, the smaller lever on the right side of the receiver just because that's gonna be what's mostly digging into my index finger. Um, it is still going to be an ambidextrous safety, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the smaller one on this right side. So each side of the safety is held in by, um, by pins. So it's much similar to uh, my HK um, MR762. So really that's no big deal for me. So now that that's in place, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it to the other side. Once again, showing how awesome the reaction block is to work on receiver. So this is the longer safety selector, and this is gonna go on my left side. So this is actually going to be what my thumb is going to interface with. So same deal, it's also hold in, held in by roll pins. So I'm just gonna drive that in from the top. So now that the safety is in place, uh, it's really important to just go ahead and check safety and reset. Um, so making sure that it stays on safe when you're pulling the trigger, making sure that it you know catches the hammer and it's not you know binding up at any places and like that. So uh, remember to function check anytime you make any modifications with your gun. So now that I'm putting the rifle back together, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the plug for the law folder just to make it easier on myself. I am gonna do a separate video on the law folder, so just stay tuned for that. Um, but I'm just gonna be putting it into place now. Putting the receiver pins back together and then opening the law folder to put the plug for the buffer. And then closing it. That's it. So all in all, uh, the 
The forward assist is more of a cosmetic uh, upgrade, but I really think that the Badger safety is an awesome upgrade. Very tactile. Um, it's one of my favorite sele selectors that I've had. Most of them have been knights, but this is a great upgrade and I would definitely recommend it. I'm going to run with a 60 degree, which I don't see any problem with doing that. I think it's uh, pretty cool and pretty quick, uh, but I'll let you guys know how I like the 60 degree throw on it. Thank you for tuning into this video. I will be uploading on my regular upload schedule in the future. Stay tuned and stay safe out there.